Hey, worship leaders, so I wanted to come on here and tell you about a song that I just taught my church recently. It's called My Worth Is Not In What I Own. It's by the Gettys. It's a newer style hymn, and if you never heard it, you should definitely go check it out. But as we were singing the song, as I was leading it, I was feeling convicted on all kinds of levels. I mean, the gist of the song is this, is that we tend to rely too much and trust in our own self, our own skills, whatever it may be, often to the neglect of trusting in God. This conviction hits hard as a worship leader who loves gear, I love guitar gear. If you've been around the channel, you know I love pedal boards and guitar stuff. You guys know. And also someone who relies too heavily on my skill or gifting to get me through rather than it being an outpouring from my time with God. And another area this is convicting on that I know a lot of other worship leaders face also is when we think either too lowly of ourselves or too highly of ourselves, depending on what day it is. So I want to give you a quick challenge today to consider how you're going to finish this year. 2020 has been a crazy year. A lot of stuff has happened. We can all admit to that. It's been a little crazy uh, and it's not over yet. It's still, we still have more to come. And there's nothing really saying that 2021 is gonna be any better, but let's let's pray that it does. Pretty please. We usually wait till the new year to make resolutions, but I've just been convicted and feeling challenged to finish this year out strong. We can either give up, coast our way through, and not reach our potential as worship leaders, or we can dig in, drive to a specific goal, and finish strong. So I got this song on my mind, My Worth Is Not In What I Own, and it got me thinking about these three things as I finish the year, and I want you to think about these three things. Our stuff, our skill, and our self-worth. So you might be thinking, well, Jimmy, what does finishing the year strong have anything to do with my stuff, my skill, and my self-worth? Well, how we view our stuff and ourselves determines where our mind, our thoughts, and our hearts go. Scripture says where your treasure is, that is where your heart is. And it also says, set your mind on things above, not things that are here on earth. It's important that we guide our hearts in this and not let our hearts guide us. So I have some quick thoughts that I want to discuss about those three things. But before we do, before we dig in, I just want to say, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Jimmy Cooper. I created Hey Worship Leader to be a resource for worship leaders. On this channel, we talk about all things worship ministry, whether it be about gear and guitar playing, which I love, or how to lead your teams well and be organized. And I also love that stuff. Um, also, how to pastor your people through worship music, all that stuff. We talk about all that on here. So hang around, watch some other videos, get caught up. But something that's also very important to me is soul care, taking care of the inner self of the worship leader. And that's why it's important to have these talks. So if you want more content like this, please hit the like button if you do like it. Also, if you haven't already, please hit subscribe right now. When I look at my analytics, it shows that like 80% of the people who watch my videos aren't subscribed. So if that's you, go ahead and click the subscribe button hit the subscribe button and hit that little notification bell so you don't miss out on new videos when they come out. Also, for all my HWL insiders out there, thank you for subscribing. It's basically my email list where you can get up to date on everything that's going on. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, you can go to my website right here. Also, check out my website. I just redid it. I put a little video up there. Um, it's kind of blurry. But um, anyways, I redid my website. You can go check out some of this stuff. But if you scroll down on the main page, oh look, I got my YouTube subscribe but also right here become an HWL insider here you can click that and become an insider and sometimes you get free stuff and you stay up to date on everything that's going on I just gave away something cool to my subscribers this past week so if you weren't an HWL insider then you missed out but that's okay you can do it now and you'll be ready for some new free stuff coming later this year so stick around wait for that so the three things that we're gonna think about as we finish this year strong, the first one is our stuff. Now, as we enter this holiday season, we're gonna be bombarded with stuff. Stuff that we think we need, but we really don't need. So funny story, I've been teaching my kids what marketing is and how when a product is marketed well, even when there's no actual increase in value, people will pay more. And the same is, is true the other way. Like you can have a really good product, but if it's not marketed well, uh, you, you won't sell anything. But the funny part is that now when I go shopping, if I'm out in the store or I see something on Amazon and I, I see something I want, my kids will be like, hey dad, be careful. I think you're being marketed. It's really funny and I'm glad to see that my kids can recognize that, but it's also convicting because it's easy to see when someone else is being marketed, but sometimes it's difficult to see that in our own lives. And it got me thinking about the tension that some worship leaders have to hold, the tension of stuff, the getting the stuff we actually need to get the job done versus getting things that just seem cool or maybe someone else had it. There are times we justified our need for more because it's for the church. I've seen people go into debt buying the gear of their dreams, putting it on credit cards, all in the name of, I need it for Sunday morning. And sometimes this fulfills us because we just like things or maybe because we think we've made it if we have this piece of gear or it just makes us happy. It's just something we've always wanted. It could be a number of different things. But I would challenge you with the lyrics of the song I mentioned at the beginning. It says that he is our redeemer, our greatest treasure. 
And so don't let stuff get in the way, especially the rest of this year, for this focused time. Don't let stuff get in the way of you being the worship leader that you were meant to be. All right, number two, skill. Now, a lot of times we buy gear to cover up our lack of skill, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about in reference to skill when we rely too heavily on our skill to get us through rather than it being an outpouring of our relationship with God. So picture this, imagine this scenario. You get to church early on a Sunday morning and you're exhausted, you're tired. You were up late the night before doing who knows what. You haven't had a lot of time this week to pray and stay connected to God. And this morning, you're just not feeling it. But you know you can sing these songs really well. You've done them a hundred times. You can play all the parts. You can get up there and do what you have to do. But the whole time you're thinking, how quickly can I get up there, get this over with, go home and jump in bed. Now I've had days like this, I'm sure we all have, but this is not the way to lead God's church. This is not the way to shepherd his people's hearts. The problem with worship ministry is that you can look the part without actually being the part. You can play the role and do all the things and no one would ever know if you're actually serving or if you're just performing. But putting on this show will not last. You will get burnt out. So again, the song challenged us. It says he's our redeemer, he's our greatest treasure, and he's the wellspring of our soul. Now what this means is that he is the infinite supply of giving us everything we need to do what he's called us to do. And trust me, if you're not drinking from this well, the well of Christ, I'm telling you, and I know people watching this, some of you watching this are in this position right now because you were attracted to worship ministry because of the stage or the gear or whatever it is. But I'm telling you, if you aren't tapping into the power of God through Christ Jesus, then you will dry up. So I'm challenging you as you finish 2020 strong, don't trust in your skill to get you through. Trust in Christ, trust in him alone. All right, number three, this is the big one. We talked about our stuff our skill, and now we're talking about self-worth. And this is a huge topic for worship leaders. I'm on all kinds of forums with worship leaders and I see comments all the time and it deals with this very topic of self-worth. And this is a legitimate concern because as worship leaders, we're juggling theology and art. They're, they're coming together and sometimes it's difficult to separate ourselves from that. So picture this scenario. You're on stage, you're about to lead worship, and you see someone in the audience. Maybe it's your crush. Maybe it's your mom, maybe it's your pastor, and you start leading really well, and all of a sudden, all you can think about is the fact that, man, I'm doing a pretty good job. And then your mind starts to think, man, I hope they, whoever they are, I hope they're noticing how good I'm doing. And the problem is you begin to find your self-worth in what other people are thinking of you. And now you may be thinking, well, that's not me. I'm never concerned that I'm doing too good, but often I'm thinking about the fact that I'm not doing good enough. And that might be true, but the same truth is true on the flip side of the scenario. It goes both ways. It's the same trap. Maybe this scenario will seem familiar to you. You're up there leading worship and you've botched it. You can't believe it. You've, you've practiced it at home 15 times perfectly. You went through three rehearsals flawlessly. And now that it's live, now you're up there and it's the service you have forgotten everything, your fingers aren't working, your throat's messing up, it feels like there's a baby unicorn doing jumping jacks in your throat. <laughs> you can't sing all the right notes. Things are not looking good. And then you sink, you sink into depression. <laughs> or another scenario is that you're up there, you're leading, you did everything like you planned, you did everything right, and then that person, usually a Karen, no! comes up to you and tells you one thing that needed improvement in the service. For whatever reason, there's one thing that just wasn't right. And then again, you crash, you dive into despair. All right, well, I'm done with the scenarios, but I'm sure you have seen yourself in one of those scenarios before. I definitely have, that's why I thought of them. But the point is this, and I'm sure you've heard this saying before, that if you take credit when things are not going well, you'll also tend to take credit when things are going well. Now, there's nothing wrong with owning up to your mistakes, and there's nothing wrong with acknowledging a job well done that you prepared and you did exactly what you were going to do. But the point is, is not to take yourself too seriously. The work of the Holy Spirit doesn't rise and fall based on how well you perform your tasks. And thank God for that, right? Like, we thank God that he can still work through our errors. But the trap is that we find our worth either in ourselves or what people are saying about us, whether good or bad. But the last verse of this song drives this point home and it gets me every time. It says this, two wonders here that I confess, my worth and my unworthiness, my value fixed, my ransom paid at the cross. What a dichotomy, right? First, my worth does not shift on what I do. It is fixed on whose I am. You're a child of God. Your worth does not change. And some of you need to hear this today. You have value and is not dependent on how you perform. God loves you no matter what. And second, you are not worthy. You are actually unworthy. Christ alone is worthy because he is God and he proved all that on the cross when he died for our sins. And that is how we have hope because if we have hope in ourselves, we will let ourselves down every single time. But when our soul is, I'm gonna use words from the song again, satisfied in him alone, we can be the worship leaders that God has called us to be. 
Well, I hope this video inspires you to finish strong, to finish this year, 2020 strong, this crazy year. Don't let it get you down. Don't let it win. These are just circumstances that will change one day. Finish strong, trust in God, drink from the well, the infinite supply of everything you need to do what God's called you to do. And then take all that and pour it right back out into ministry. Pass to your people, lead your team, and perform with excellence. You got this. I know you can do it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.